most of them do because that's how they entered. They entered through Bobo Shanti, through music, Kepoton, Sizzla, it's through music. Most Rastafari that you have, that generation, it's through music. So what, what is Bobo Shanti or what is uh, Kepoton saying, I'll go with that. By a band. What is what you know? So, so read, read, you know, read a chapter a day. Chase the devil away. Twelve tribes. So many, let's say 98 percent, are through twelve tribes, or Bobo Shanti, or Ethiopian World Federation. So yes, Rastafari here, like in Jamaica, because even Jamaica, when when we are talking about promoting reggae, Bob Marley and the Whalers, twelve tribes. Many of the whole crew, the Congo, the, the, the Congo, Abyssinians, you name it, Freddie McGregor, all those guys. Many of them were in 12 tribes. So yeah, the Bible. So that's how reggae came into. Even, even if you go to Kenya, you'll find either Bobo or 12 tribes. Now, that's how I entered too. Because for me, I come from a Christian background. Like many other people, like even the Jamaicans. So the Bible was an easy access. It is through studying more that Rastafari was about to say. When you read the word Nyayabingi, or which is Nyavinji, when you read, look at the, the origin of that, it had nothing to do. It was actually anti-Bible or anti-anything that is African. So my 28 years of being in Rastafari, I, I continued studying these things. That I found no difference between being in an institution of Christianity then turning Rastafari into the same institution that you're trying to avoid. Because what it, what it taught me is that every human being, there's a reason where you are, where you are. If you're in the Himalayas, you are created in the Himalayas. Spirituality comes from the culture. So in the Himalayas, you will have the way you, you view the creator based on where you were put. If you're in the islands, you see it that way. If you're in Judea or Palestine or Jerusalem, you see every area on this planet had its own messengers, its own prophets, its own, based on how they saw creation and the creator. So it is through Rastafari that I got to learn all these things. Because do not forget, even in Ethiopia, not everybody is a Christian. Although Christianity is, you know, Orthodox in, in Ethiopia is huge. But they also found the culture. The Romo had their own culture. Southern Sudanese had their own culture. All these guys knew the creator in their own way. The Bible is one of those things that unites all of us, just like the Quran, that all of us, no matter what color you are, you are following one path. For me, that's why I talk about roots and culture. As a roots man, I don't agree with that. I agree that there are many ways that can lead you. Otherwise, all of us would have been created looking the same. We don't even feel the same. But there are basic things that make us human. You love, you cry, you become bitter, you hate. You know, just like any creature that was created, you have emotion that unites humanity. But anything beyond that, things change. You have a different skin color for a reason. You have a different type of hair for a reason. Now, if you come to here, which I call the area of Narubali, you know, Narubali is the, is the mother. It doesn't matter. If you go to ancient Kemet, which is Egypt, if you go to Nubia, if you go to Kush, if you go to Abyssinia, the mother is right here, which is what, what we call Nalubali, that huge freshwater lake. It goes all the way and covers all these countries. If you look at the temples of ancient Egypt and Kemet, their spirituality, their, the holy of holies, the doors, are facing Nalubali, because they call it the mother. Because Nalubali is the mother, gave them what they call the Nile, gave them life. So all those are the children. White Nile, Blue Nile, this, you know, they come from the mother. To the extent that the pharaohs used to come and do pilgrimages. Like these people go to Mecca or Jerusalem, they used to come to Nalubali annually for spiritual pilgrimages because they consider that the mother. That's where the spirituality comes from. All these things you hear Asa, Asa in ancient Egypt and Egypt, they rhyme with words like Mukasa. If you go to Nubia, they have Shabbataka as a pharaoh. We have Sabataka. So if you dig down and read their books, they will tell you where their, 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 their spirituality comes from. All these things are things we did not know before. Now, in Ethiopia, as Ethiopian Orthodox, they talk about Queen of Makeda. 
They talk about King Solomon. That's fine with me. You know, that's their way. They found their truth that way. You know, so me as a, a rootsman or a Stafari rootsman, my tr the only truth I know is that there is a creator. Everything outside that, every human being, spirituality is fluid. You cannot bottle, you know. You see this fluid? If I put this in a dish, it will become that shape. If I put it in this bottle, it will make the shape. Spirituality is like, it's fluid. Rastafari read the Bible, which is a good book, but for me, I don't consider it as the only book. You know? So those who want to go in 12 tribes, I, I don't see any value in being called a Hebrew or being called an Israelite. Some people, you know, if I find African people or whatever tr saying, no, we were the original Jews, for me, that, it doesn't matter to me. Where I was created, that's what matters to me. There's a reason why. And there's, I don't know anything about Hebrew. I like their books, I like their spirituality. But if you read their Old Testament, for instance, I can tell you that word for word in those books, we have it right here. It, it came from here, you know. So we need to go to the root, to the source, to understand this. So I encourage you out of Rasta. I do understand in Jamaica, you've been there 400 years as a slave. You don't know where you come. You know it's from Africa, but Africa is a huge continent. So where exactly do you? It is such a painful thing. I've been to Jamaica many times, and I speak to them, and you can tell the pain. We are lucky to know where we come from. I know my clan. I know my ancestors, I know where they came from, I know where they're buried. Now, for you to be somewhere for 400 years and you don't know where you really come from, you don't know your clan, you don't know your language, you don't, it is painful. So Rastafari was the rallying call, it's a flag that united all those people and said, you know what, we have a king, let us just go with that. Then they have this thing of saying the whole Africa was Ethiopia. Well, I don't know what that means. The, here in Nalubale alone, there are 54 ethnicities, all different, 54, all coming from the same mother and father, literally, you know. So, they, Rastafari, what I like about it is the unification that it, it's a rallying call for our brothers and sisters who have no clue where they can even start. That's, you know, I'm thinking, it's like you're floating in the air, you don't know where, you're, it's painful. Having no root, having no roots at all that you know that you can trace. What was done to those people is worse than genocide. They are alive, but they are dead. You cannot be alive and not know anything about where you come from. You don't have a name. Your name is not your name. You are given a name like a product. Of the slave ship, they give you a name. It is, it is worse than genocide. It is better for some people to have just died. Like some people committed holocaust and killed people, and then you know they died. They died knowing where they come from. They died knowing. But being alive for 400 years and not having a clue of who you are, it is the worst genocide ever. It's beyond, there's no word for it, you know? So I do understand why Rastafari followed the Bible. They grew up through Christianity or Islam or whatever. These, are the, these people wrote, but there are, are books that are older than the Bible. There are Egyptian books, there are Sumerian books, they all talk about the same things. The Bible comes from those books. But the issue is, what is the origin of all these things? I'm talking about spirituality. Not the origin of the human being, but of spirituality. So Rastafari, read the Bible, but please, especially if you're Rastafari, who knows where you come from? You're on the African continent. Rastafari talks about roots and culture, not Jamaican roots, not Ethiopian roots. Your roots and culture. Not any other, you know, I'm not a Jamaican. I can speak Patwa. I'm not an Ethiopian. You know? I'm from here, from Nalubali, the land of Nalubali. I'm from Buganda. That's who I am, not a Jamaican. So Rastafari told me that your roots and culture, first and foremost, who are you? So yes, read the Bible, but the Bible is not the answer. Let me tell you something about the Bible. If you read the Bible and go to the book of Chronicles, Go to the book of Chronicles in the Bible. It is exactly what we have here at Nalubale, what, what we call Okulanya. If you go to the book of Chronicles, the Jews or the Hebrews will tell you where they come from. They start from Adam. So Adam had this one, then this one, then this wife gave birth. It is a, it is a whole entire book you know, of their lineage. Let me tell you something else. When you go to the first book of the New Testament, 
which is Matthew, I believe. Chapter 1, verse 1. Do you know how it starts? For the New Testament to introduce Jesus to the, to the New Testament, they started the same thing of the Chronicles. There was the Adam. Adam begat someone. Uh, King David. King David. Then they come to Joseph. Then they come to Jesus. The first chapter of the New Testament, that's what we call Okulanya. Meaning that if Jesus is the son of God, even, the, even God who sent that Jesus felt the need not to just throw Jesus like Superman, like a stone. Because if the creator can do anything, right? He could have just thrown Jesus there and they find him somewhere and say, who are you? I'm Jesus. Like Superman. They found a kid there. They don't know where the kid came. Jesus had to come through a lineage. Echika. You know what I'm saying? This is the first book of the New Testament. The, if, the, if we believe that the creator is the ruler of all, the creator could have just created Jesus and just said, hey, go and meet these people. Because and on the top of the tree, those people were not born of flesh. They were created. They do not, you know, they don't, there's no mother and father there at the top. Those who are created. That's how close you can get to the creator. So you have to follow this lineage from here to there. And that, if you're Rastafari in Africa, has nothing to do with the Bible. It is right around you. That's where you need to start. Learn from the Jews. That's what they do. Well, let me hear you say, Mountain, Mountain, Mountain.